The UFC returns on January 14th with their first event of 2023. For those of you that have watched Dana White's contender series, DWCS, you may recognize a few fighters on this card. 11 of the 24 fighters at UFC Vegas 67 have fought on DWCS. Let's start with the prelim card. Priscilla Cachoeira vs. Sajara Eubanks. Eubanks by decision is our prediction. This bout has all the makings of a close decision. As a rule, we steer clear of money line wages for close WMMA fights. Sajara Eubanks is a good wrestler and she has faced solid competition. Unfortunately, her .500 winning percentage accurately reflects how inconsistent she is. Over the course of 14 career fights she has never won more than two fights in a row. She comes into this fight off a round three co-loss to Melissa Gato. She has suffered some ugly losses. Her 2019 decision loss as a minus 310 favorite against Correra was one of them. Eubanks is not a fighter you can wager on with much confidence. Cachoeira is similar to Eubanks in that she is also unreliable from a betting perspective. She began her UFC run with three straight losses. She has gone 4-1 to one since then. One of her biggest weaknesses is her submission defense. She was submitted by Gillian Robertson and Valentina Shevchenko. All of Cachoeira's UFC wins have been over less competitive opponents like Lipsky, Kim, Mazzini and Dobson. She had a hard time against slightly tougher opponents like Molly McCann. And, she was finished when she fought higher-level opponents like Shevchenko. Eubanks by decision is the prediction. Full disclosure, it's difficult to have confidence in either fighter. The betting spots we like for this fight are the fight goes the distance, over two and a half rounds and the fight starts around three. Eubanks by submission and Cachoeira by co should offer some juicy odds. Charles Johnson vs. Jimmy Flick. Charles Johnson inside the distance is the prediction. Those who like Flick by submission, we can't argue with your thought process. Either way, the judges will likely not be required for this bout. Notably, Johnson is replacing Jeff Molina who was originally scheduled to face Flick. Mr. Flick is one of several DWCS alumni on this card. He won his UFC debut over Cody Durden in late 2020. He then surprised everyone with an abrupt retirement. Flick would later explain that his retirement was due to family mental health issues. He has 12 submission wins out of his 16 career victories, 75% submission rate. Flick has been knocked out in four of his five losses which is reason for concern. When Flick gets stunned he has a hard time employing effective survival skills. Some fighters can't regroup after they get stung. Flick might be one of those fighters. He has also faced a weaker strength of schedule than Johnson. Charles Johnson blazed a path to the LFA title before getting called up to UFC last year. Looking back, he may have been better off staying in the LFA a bit longer. The UFC basically signed him to be Mohamed Mokayev's crash dummy. Mokayev was a minus 490 favorite to give you an idea of how lopsided the fight was. Johnson is very athletic and well-rounded. He has sharp boxing skills and can hold his own on the ground. It is in Johnson's best interest to utilize his kickboxing and speed. Grappling exchanges are going to expose him to submission attacks. Flick's last nine wins have been by submission. One concern for Johnson is that he will get baited into a grappling match. Johnson may want to prove that he can grapple with Flick. If he does that, he will play right into the hands of Flick. The strength of schedule and athleticism are just enough for us to give the edge to Johnson. The props we like the most are Flick by submission, Johnson inside the distance and the fight doesn't go the distance. Daniel Arguta vs. Isaac Dulgarian. Isaac Dulgarian inside the distance is the prediction. It's difficult to get a good read on Dulgarian. He has fought a light schedule. The combined record of all five of his professional opponents is 16-17. to Only one of those opponents has a winning record. He is a balanced fighter with finishing ability, 100% finish rate. He is 9-0 between his amateur and pro bouts with finishes in every fight. The quality of Dulgarian's opponents makes it nearly impossible to evaluate his skill level. At the very least, Arguta will be a step up in competition for Dulgarian. Will Dulgarian rise to the occasion in his UFC debut or will Arguta hand him his first defeat?
Argueta lost his first fight on The Ultimate Fighter, 2021, to Ricky Tercios. After the show, he resumed fighting for LFA, 5-0 in LFA. He eventually got the call from the UFC when Damon Jackson's opponent backed out last summer. Arguta went into the fight against Jackson as a plus 500 underdog on late notice. Arguta has wrestling credentials but you couldn't tell against Damon Jackson. Against lesser competition, Arguta secures submissions and looks pretty good on the ground. When he has faced better competition, his striking has looked ineffective and his grappling was non-existent. Arguta throws looping punches that leave him off balance at times. He needs to be mindful of counter-actions by Dulgarian. Arguta is a southpaw but that shouldn't be much of a factor in this fight. One of the bets we like the most for this fight is the no-distance prop. Both fighters have finishing ability and Dulgarian hasn't been past round one. Dulgarian in round one is a tempting play. The props we are most interested in for this fight are the under two and a half rounds and the fight doesn't go the distance. Alan Nascimento vs Carlos Hernandez. Alan Nascimento by decision is the prediction. Nascimento is a solid grappler with good submission skills. He can frustrate his opponents with position control. He throws nice combinations that include front kicks to the body. Nascimento has never knocked out an opponent which suggests he has limited striking power. His last fight against Hadley is a prime example of how Nascimento wins fights. His style isn't very entertaining but it gets the job done. Nascimento has 9 submission victories in 19 total career wins, 47%. The submission prop for Nascimento may be worth a sprinkle. Nascimento will have a 2-inch reach advantage in this fight. Carlos Hernandez is a UFC newcomer that has won back-to-back split decisions. Half of his career wins are by submission. He has been to decision in his last three fights. Hernandez is a solid overall fighter but it's too early to tell if he is going to be successful in the UFC. The narrow margins of victory over limited competition is a bit concerning. If Nascimento takes the fight to the ground, Hernandez is going to be in for a frustrating 15 minutes. Hernandez needs to keep the fight standing. Hernandez showed the ability to get back to his feet in recent fights but he needs to be careful giving up his back in the process. Nascimento needs to be mindful of Hernandez's submission ability as well. The props we like the most for this fight are the over two and a half rounds, fight starts round three and Nascimento by decision. Depending on the price tag, the submission prop for each fighter may be worth some lunch money. Matthias Mendonca vs. Javid Basharat. This fight includes two former Dana White contender series fighters. Javid Basharat by decision is the prediction. Mendonca made a splash with his first round knockout in the contender series last year. He is on a 10-fight winning streak. Mendonca looks good on film and has been steamrolling his opponents. The quality of the competition is the only question mark. Even his opponent on the contender series wasn't very impressive. The weak strength of schedule makes it difficult to evaluate Mendonca. He might give Javid all he can handle for three rounds or he may find the step up in competition overwhelming. It's hard to get a good lean either way. Javid is looking to improve his record to 14-0. and zero. He has an experience advantage because of his two wins in the UFC. Javid does an excellent job working in kicks and he fights out of multiple stances. Javid utilizes a heavy pace that can be exhausting for his opponents. It will be interesting to see if Mendonca backs down from Javid's forward pressure. The betting spots we like the most for this fight are the over one and a half rounds and the fight starts round three. Depending on the price, we may sprinkle a wager on Mendonca ITD. Nick Fiore vs. Mateusz Rebecki. Rebecki inside the distance is the prediction. Mateusz Rebecki is a wrestler turned MMA fighter. His power punches are a disguise so he can close the distance, much like the Dagestani wrestlers. He earned his UFC contract last year with an exciting round one submission on Dana White's contender series. In 17 career fights, he has only been to a decision twice. Rebecki is an equal opportunity finisher, 8 knockouts and 6 submissions. He is a mauler that suffocates his opponents. Will Rebecki's finishing ability transfer to the UFC? Fiore is replacing Omar Morales. Making a UFC debut as a substitute is not the ideal way to break into the promotion. Fiore looks decent on the limited film we were able to find. 
He is a Renzo Gracie product so his submission skills are above average. He is undefeated with finishes in all six of his fights. The finish rate and undefeated record is impressive. Then again, he has been fighting questionable competition. His last opponent is 5 and 20. He also fought 16 and 106 J. Ellis twice. We just don't have enough reliable information about Fiore to make an educated wager on him. We may have a small play on the fight not going the distance in the under two and a half rounds. Abdul Razak Al Hassan vs. Claudio Ribeiro. Abdul Razak Al Hassan by round one co is the prediction. Al Hassan is a physical specimen with serious knockout power. He is 1 and 4 in his last five fights, which include a very close split decision loss in his last bout. He was once 4 and 1 in the UFC. His UFC record is now 5 and 5. All five of his wins in the UFC have been by round one knockout. He lost three in a row, 2020 minus 21, while favored at minus 310, minus 210 and minus 350. He won his very next fight by round one knockout as a plus 200 underdog. For whatever reason, the lines are frequently off for his fights. Ribeiro has displayed finishing ability against inferior competition, 90% finish rate. Until he faces a quality fighter, it's hard to accurately assess his potential. He had a highlight knockout on DWCS to earn his UFC contract. His opponent made a mistake and he took full advantage of it. Will Ribeiro's striking power transfer to the UFC? Al Hassan has only been finished once in his career. The props we like the most for this fight are the fight not going the distance, under two and a half and Al Hassan by round one knockout. The main card starts off with Umar Nurmagomedov vs. Raoni Barcelos. Umar is the favorite for good reason. The chalky money line was expected. Umar has been priced at nearly a 1,000 favorite in his prior two fights. Barcelos is a good fighter with the skill set to make this an entertaining bout. Umar by submission is the prediction. Barcelos is an underrated wrestler, grappler. He is a two-time South American wrestling champion and five-time Brazilian national champion. His father is an accomplished BJJ practitioner that began training Barcelos from a young age. He earned an impressive decision win over said Nurmagomedov in 2019, no relation to Umar or Khabib. Barcelos dominated said with grappling and was even going after a submission in round three. Umar might have the bigger long-term potential, but this is a much closer fight than the money line suggests. Umar is going to be a very popular parlay piece. Umar uses a mixed stance and has equal power from both sides. He trains under Khabib, his cousin, so his grappling is world-class. He separates himself with his elite kicking. Dagestani fighters are evolving. The first generation of Dagestani MMA fighters were like Khabib. The second generation is more like Umar, said Nurmagomedov and Islam Makachev. The props we like for this fight are the fight starting round two, not going the distance and Umar by submission. Barcelos should be able to defend submissions for at least the first five minutes. As the fight goes longer, Umar will have more opportunities to penetrate the defense of Barcelos. It is important to note that Barcelos has only been finished one time in his career, rear naked choke. Thanks for reading MMA Fight Club. Subscribe for free to receive new posts and support our work. Ketlin Vieira vs. Raquel Pennington. Raquel, Rocky, Pennington by decision is the prediction. This should be an excellent fight between two evenly matched opponents. They have a lot of similarities but Rocky has fought the tougher strength of schedule. The biggest reason we like Rocky in this fight is her punching power. In a close match, the fighter that lands the more crowd-pleasing strikes can get the nod from the judges. Vieira is on a nice streak having won three of her last four fights, seven and two in the UFC. The recent wins over Tate and Home look especially good on her resume. It's important to put those fights in perspective. Maisha Tate is not the fighter she once was. And, most people thought Vieira lost to Holly Home. Vieira mixes up a variety of kicks and punches into her combinations. She sports an impressive 92% takedown defense. She lands 3.13 strikes per minute while absorbing 4.03 strikes per minute, negative striking ratio. Vieira isn't known for her wrestling but she averages 1.51 takedowns per fight. Against Kunitskaya, she had some grappling success. Somehow, 
The judges gave the fight to Kunitskaya even though Vieira had almost nine minutes of control time between rounds one and three. Against Tate and Home, Vieira didn't employ much wrestling. Most of Vieira's fights go to the scorecards. She has two finishes in 15 career fights and hasn't finished an opponent in almost six years. Pennington is quietly becoming one of the best female fighters of her generation. She won the Ultimate Fighter in 2013. She has compiled a 13-6 record in the UFC, including TUF fights. Her biggest career wins are over Maisha Tate, 2016, and Jessica Andrade, 2015. She comes into this fight looking for her fifth win in a row. Much like Vieira, Rocky isn't known for her finishing ability. But, Rocky hits significantly harder than Vieira. The harder strikes should get the attention of the judges. The statistics suggest this fight goes the full three rounds. Let's do ourselves the favor of avoiding the stress of a shaky decision, no money line bet. The props we like the most are the over two and a half rounds and the fight starts round three. We will also sprinkle the split decision props for each fighter. Punner heel Soriano vs Roman Kopilov. Roman Kopilov by decision is the prediction. Regardless of who wins, this should be fun to watch. Soriano has tremendous power in his hands and a high finish rate, 89% finish rate. He is capable of finishing lower level UFC fighters like Dalka, but he has a harder time with more established opponents. Soriano averages 3.95 strikes per minute and absorbs 3.42 strikes per minute. He is a former state champion wrestler who also did some wrestling in college. Unfortunately, his wrestling skills haven't really transferred to the cage. Soriano averages just 1.02 takedowns per fight. 99% of Soriano's striking is done with his hands. Soriano is becoming a knockout or bust type of fighter. After five fights in the UFC, he is 3-2 with three knockouts. His defeats have been via decision. If he can't land something big early, his lack of cardio limits his effectiveness. Once Soriano is fatigued, he can't defend takedowns, 31% takedown defense, and his striking power diminishes. All three of his knockouts in the UFC are under five and a half minutes. Seven of his eight career knockouts have occurred in round one. Copy Love lost his first two UFC fights to Carl Robison and Albert Duraev. He rebounded with his first UFC win last year over Daikiriko. The decision loss to Duraev is respectable. The submission loss to Robison is not a good look. Robison is 9 and 6 overall and has been finished in his last four fights. Copy Love's win over Daichirisio needs to be put into perspective as well. Daichirisio is 1 to 5 in his last six fights and has been knocked out in his last two fights. Copy Love averages 3.44 strikes per minute while absorbing 3.81 strikes per minute. He mixes in a powerful body kick with his hand combinations. He also has a usual jab. Copy Love averages 0.37 takedowns per fight and defends takedowns at 87% rate. Based on the numbers, a stand-up affair appears to be in order. Copy Love will be the slightly taller fighter. Notably, both fighters are southpaws. Copy Love by decision is the prediction. Due to our lack of confidence in either fighter and the potential for high variance, we are avoiding the money line altogether. Instead, we will focus on two props, Soriano by first round knockout and the fight goes under two and a half rounds. We might sprinkle copy love by decision depending on the price tag. Dan Ige versus Damon Jackson. Dan Ige by Co. is the prediction. Ige made his way into the UFC via Dana White's Contender Series, 2017. He is 1-4 and four in his last five fights. He faced solid competition in all four of his recent losses. He is known for his durability and stamina. Ige has been to a decision in six of his last seven fights. He was easily cut in the first round of his last fight. By round two, he was a bloody mess. Ige has been in some tough fights the past few years. He might be starting to show the effects of those battles. In some ways, Ige hasn't been the same since the beating he took from Qatar. Ige averages 3.80 strikes per minute. He absorbs 3.56 strikes per minute. He will have a significant advantage in striking. He has more power in his strikes and higher volume. Ige also has better striking defense than Jackson. Damon Jackson is enjoying a four-fight winning streak. He is 6-2-2 two, two in two stints with the UFC. 
Jackson has excellent submission ability and he likes to take his opponents back. His striking is serviceable but he is much more effective on the ground. Jackson averages 2.65 strikes per minute and absorbs 2.83 strikes per minute, negative striking ratio. He averages 2.62 takedowns per fight compared to 1.23 takedowns per fight for Dan Ige. Jackson has been finished in all four of his losses, three TKOs and one submission. His last two defeats were to Ilya Topuria in 2020 and Movlid Kibulev in 2019. The Movlid knockout was worthy of knockout of the year honors. Jackson defeated Arguta by decision last year. Jackson got clipped in round three with a basic punch, one of his eyes was closing and he looked fatigued. If it wasn't for Arguta's lack of experience, Jackson may have lost that fight. The way Jackson got wobbled by a simple punch raises questions about his durability. Ige is a significantly better striker than Arguta. Jackson will need to execute a near-flawless game plan to avoid getting chin-checked. Ige is the superior striker with significantly more power than Jackson. Ige also has the athleticism and endurance to defend takedowns. This is an excellent matchup for Ige. The props we like for this fight are the fight doesn't go the distance and Ige by Ko. Sean Strickland vs. Nasordine Imovov. Nasordine Imovov by decision is the prediction. Strickland is filling in on about a week's notice for Kelvin Gastelum. Strickland is one of the most active fighters on the roster. Consider this, he has fought 8 times in the past 3 years. He has fought 17 times in the past 9 years. He fought in the main event last month against Jared Cannonier. Strickland might be the first athlete in the modern era of the UFC to fight in back-to-back -back main cards. Strickland is a lot like Bobby Green and Kevin Holland. These warriors will step in on late notice any time the promotion calls. One one hand, it earns them favor with the promotion. On the other hand, it's part of the reason why their records are inconsistent. Strickland looked A versus Cannoneer. He didn't do anything much different from his past performances. Strickland is who he is, a top 10 contender that will put on a good show. Love him or leave him, he is a fan favorite with a fun personality. Strickland is known for his high output and forward pressure. He doesn't let his opponent have time to gather themselves. He has shared the cage with champions like Usman and Alex Pereira. He also has an impressive winning percentage in the UFC with a record of 12 and 5. Sean has tremendous cardio which allows him to maintain a high pace for all five rounds. His two biggest downfalls are his lack of finishing power and a limited ground game. He has one knockout finish in the last eight years. He has been to decision in five of his last seven fights. His grappling deficiencies could rear their ugly head against Imovov. Imovov is more of a striker, but he has some legit grappling skills. Imovov was born in Dagestan after all. As for Imovov, he has tremendous footwork, quick striking and a balanced skill set. His 80% winning percentage is only getting better as he currently finds himself in the midst of a 9-1 winning streak. Unlike Strickland, Imovov has flashed some finishing ability. He has finishes in 5 of his last 7 wins. He is also very durable. Imovov was finished once by submission over 7 years ago. It happened to be his pro debut so we can give him a pass for that one. Against Buckley, he took a few hard shots to the chin with no problem. One of those shots included a knee. So far, his chin has checked out. What are the shortcomings of a Mavivs game? He holds his lands low and eats too many punches. He has some wrestling skills but his wrestling isn't dominant. As he fatigues, his takedown attempts get very sloppy. This is a five-round fight. His cardio in general has been a question mark at times. Though he won his last fight, he looked very tired and sloppy at the end. Might cardio be the difference maker in rounds 4 and 5 of this fight? Amavov's lead leg is open to attack because of his wide karate style stance. And lastly, Imovov is a bleeder. It doesn't take much for him to open up. Strickland will more than likely touch him enough to create some facial damage. In a close fight, some blood could make the difference on the cards. We are going with Imovov because he has a higher ceiling, was able to conduct a full camp and he has more dimensions to his attack. If Strickland can't get it done on the feet with his pitter-patter style then there is no plan B. Imovov can mix in grappling to find more than one avenue to victory. All that said, this fight might be destined for a split decision.
Imagine that. Strickland going to back-to-back splits in back-to-back UFC fight night cards. The betting spots we will be honing in on are the over 3.5 rounds, fight starts around 4 and a sprinkle on the split decision props for both fighters. The best way to support this newsletter is to like, subscribe and or share. Thank you for your support.